it's the it's the Thanksgiving edition of SmackDown on the Sci-Fi Network WWE. Uh, not sure where they are, but uh, we kick it off with the reigning defending face of the WWE and WWE Champion Randy Orton, and uh, with a in-ring interview uh, being conducted by Renee Young. She reminds him of what happened on Monday when Cena basically challenged him to a one-on-one -on -one match to unify the titles. And Orton basically says nothing and want, doesn't want to talk about it. She asked him, she asked him if, he's, if he feels threatened or insecure about his position with the authority, Triple H and Stephanie. Which again, he says nothing, and eventually he walks away. Uh, oh, I'm not sure where this is going, but I have a bad feeling that this is going to end with DLC with Cena, with Cena, and with Cena holding both titles and somehow unifying them, just like Chris Jericho did about 11 years ago today. Well, not today, but 11 years ago. But they. Uh, choose not to remember that. But, uh, come on, uh, we didn't go backstage. Well, apparently Vicky Guerrero was hosting a, uh, Thanksgiving leftovers party with some of the superstars, uh, which apparently will feature several, uh, Thanksgiving traditional games, in her opinion. One being a, uh, eating contest between Titus O'Neil and the great colleague. I'm not sure who, who wants to see that or who actually won because it broke away to the first match of the night. Mark Henry coming to the ring. I'm not sure who he's fighting, but I want to point out that, uh, in my opinion, everybody says Big E looks like Carlton Banks from uh, Fresh Prince. He just found his Uncle Phil. But uh, it's time to get back to the show. See what can we find him. Uh, let's continue with SmackDown. Uncle Phil, I mean, <laughs> Uncle Phil, I mean, uh, Mark Henry beats Curtis Axel with the world's strongest slam. With Colton, I mean, Big E, like, standing in his corner. Uh, so, and Ryback was in Axel's corner, so I don't know if Axel and Ryback are actually a tag team now, or it's just. Of his friends or whatever, but apparently Uncle Phil or Mark Henry and uh, Carlton Big E are partners or tag team partners now, even though uh, uh, Big E is Intercontinental Champion. Uh, tell me they don't look like Phil and Carlton from Press Punch, but uh, we didn't go backstage to Xavier Woods and uh, uh, R Truth checking out his. Checking out Xavier's entrance last week, uh, last Monday with the Funkadactyls, which I kind of saw this coming when he came out because I kind of found it weird that he came out with the Funkadactyls and they didn't really say anything about Boris and Tensai, but they're watching it on the monitor when Big E, not, not when uh, Boris Clay comes in and gets very upset that. Uh, or to, uh, uh, Xavier Woods seemed to be stealing his gimmick, even though he gave him permission to use his music in the Funkadactyls. Uh, the, uh, Bordis seemed upset that, uh, uh, Woods kind of, uh, was trying to steal his gimmick, and Bordis his opinion, and he called him a wookie and told him to stay out of his way. This Marion Tensai who tried to calm down Bonus and it kind of looks like you can see a either a heel turn by Bonus or both by both the tons of funk uh, members Tensai and Bonus going against uh, Xavier Woods and all truth but uh, I found it kind of hilarious that um, uh, Xavier Woods was actually wearing a black Power Ranger t-shirt which actually made him look the shirt actually looked like the black the suit of the black Power Ranger which I found hilarious because
watch, if you watch, if you watch, uh, Xavier Woods matches, every time he gets ready for his finisher, he screams out, it's morphin' time, before he does his finisher, and I just think it's hilarious, they're going with his gimmick the way they are, but we still got more to come, tag team titles on the line, uh, later tonight, the Rose Brothers Cody and Goldust defend against the former champions, Waynes and Wallace the Shield. Uh, but coming up next, six man tag action. Uh, El Torito makes his in ring daily against uh, Timmy with Los Matadores against uh, the three man band who are now, for at least tonight, calling themselves the Plymouth Walkers, which is hilarious. Uh, we all know how this, how this is going to end. But it's still gonna be fun to watch, so let's get back to it. Uh, apparently Titus O'Neil won the uh, food eating contest in the back and during the party. Uh, when Kali basically did a nose dive into one of the pies, effectively taking himself out of the competition. And as reward for winning the competition, Vicky says that tonight Titus O'Neil will go one on one with Antonio Cesaro. And if anybody, if you know Antonio Cesaro, you know what that means. That means Titus may be going for the giant swing and may be puking all over the ring. But, uh, um, after that, we go back to the ring and watch the Matadores pick up the win over, uh, the Pilgrim Walker, the, the Plymouth Walkers, aka 3MB came out with Pilgrim hats and actually used the Walkers theme music, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty's theme music from the 19, like, early 1990s, uh, which I found disgraceful, but, uh, um, I still like the plan B, but I'm like, really, you had to use the Walkers theme, but, uh, whatever, uh, the bull picks up the win, along with those Matadores. We still got the World ta the Tag Team titles to be defended on the show, but, uh, it, uh, but that's probably the main event, so, but, and I just want to point out that I think it's very disrespectful of the women's champion, the Divas champion, that Vicky Guerrero actually kicked, uh, AJ, uh, Michael AJ out of the, uh, festivities going on backstage claiming that she'd start a riot or something, but, uh, that she'd start a food fight or something like that, but, nonetheless, we continue with SmackDown, uh, as we've already gone a half hour into SmackDown, we got two and a half, uh, not two and a half, but one and a half hours left, so let's how it, see how it continues. <laughs> Lord is playing Tensai, pick up the win over Xavier Woods and our truth which in a match that I kind of saw coming. I didn't realize it was going to be tonight, but, uh, uh, Doris Clay hits a splash off the middle rope onto Xavier Woods for the one, two, three, and it kind of looked like Tensai and the Funkadactyls were actually a little bit upset with Doris, the way he was acting, but they continued to dance and celebrate the win. Uh, my opinion, Doris Clay will eventually go heel, and possibly either both, uh, both the tons of funk, and the bonus and Tensai possibly going heel, or maybe just, uh, bonus and Tensai will move on to teaming with a Xavier Woods or or truth or something like that, and the fucking act will be with them, with, uh, like Xavier Woods or with Tensai or whoever they choose to be with, because I'm not... If he, if Bordis does go heel, he won't have the Funkadactyls with him. That's all I'm saying. But, um, uh, after the, after that, we go backstage to Renee Young, who interviews CM Punk about what happened last Monday. He says that he has no idea where Daniel Bryan is after he got kidnapped by the Wyatts. And he has no idea why the shield would jump him, uh, other than someone, someone, someone with authority, t 
told them to uh, make a reference to Triple H and Stephanie, but tonight he, well, not tonight, but he says he will get to the bottom of it and find out what's going on. It's my opinion. The Wyatts and the Wyatts are now with the authority with Triple H, with Stephanie, the Shield, and the Wyatts are all working for uh, Triple H, just as Kane and uh, Randy Orton currently are. It's all one big conspiracy, but uh, it's but uh, now let's get back to SmackDown. See how the rest of the show continues. Just as I thought, what uh, uh, Titus O'Neil uh ended up puking all over the ringside area after being in the, in the match with Antonio Cesaro. Cesaro had him up in the Giants' ring. Oh, and I'm not sure how many revolutions he did, but, uh, uh, Dale Young broke it up, caused a DQ, and the match was over. Uh, after the, after the match, uh, uh, Titus started getting feeling sick, and ended up throwing up in not only JBO's hat, but on, uh, which he, uh, uh, then, uh, tried to put on uh, Michael Cole's head I thought it had puke in it but he uh, ended up throwing on uh, throwing up on Seb Coulter's head and, uh, at the end of it uh, just like I thought he would the, only, the thing I didn't really like about this is that I know I shouldn't be worried about it because it's puke and who wants to see puke on TV but they actually censored it like, it was, like, vanity or something. But, uh, uh, they never used to do that back in, when I, back, like, in the Attitude Era, whatever. But I don't understand why they do it now, but whatever. Uh, coming up next is the tag team title match. Uh, the Shield, Wallace and Wayne's challenging the tag team champions, Cody and Goldust. Can the Shield... We t- we gain the tag team titles. Although the Rhodes brothers continue to reign, I have a uh, strong feeling on the uh, ladder that the Rhodes will continue to dominance over the tag team division, at least till WrestleMania. But uh, let's see how it turns out. Let's get back to Thanksgiving to the Thanksgiving SmackDown. The main event tag team match. The main event tag team title match is in disqualification as uh, Dean Ambrose, who was on commentary, jumped into the lane as soon as it looked like Cody was about to pin Seth Rollins from following the crossroads. Uh, the match it broke down into an all out fight when uh, Sam Punk came out to make the save uh, with a uh, chair and um, Dicky Well turned it into a six man tag with, between the Shield, Punk, and the Woods. The, the Shield and the team of the Woods and CM Punk. That match uh, got uh, thrown out when the Wyatt family showed up and ended up attacking uh, Goldust, who was on the outside of the ring, on in his corner wait for the tag. They attacked both of the Woods, I believe. They turned into a Wall again when the Usos and Rey Mysterio showed up to make the save. When, and that's when Vicky Well made it. A, six, a 12 on 12 match, the same match we saw, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, not, last, not last Monday, but the Monday before that on Raw. Uh, Sam Punk ends up getting a uh, pin over. Uh, Eric Rowan following a 6 for 9 from Wayne Mysterio, which led to Hulk hitting the GTS for the 1 2 3. Uh, uh, very good main event. Awesome. Like all three matches that the Shield were and Goldust and Cody were in. All three of them were awesome. Uh, and you could really tell that the fans were into it. And before all that, they, I forgot to mention it earlier on the show. They said that 
they found Daniel Bryan uh, like a few hours later after being after he got taken by the Wyatts. They found him in the parking lot and before, earlier in the show before they came out during the main event, the Wyatts did a promo where they basically said they were looking to change Daniel Bryan into a monster like they are. So, I don't know where this is going. I have a feeling that the Wyatts are actually working with Triple H or working for Triple H to say shield. So, uh, we could see the growth of the authority continue. But, uh, that's for the SmackDown, Thanksgiving SmackDown special. Uh, like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll be back for a while. In fact, and SmackDown next week.